I spent a little more time being consistent with my measuring, remeasuring to make sure I have four equal squares here. So that will really help you um, with your next step. So our next step is to figure out how uh, or what composition we want. So your composition just means what's going to be in your drawing. And so with your viewfinder, you're going to move it around until you look at places that might be interesting. Interesting places might have a lot of color, a lot of pattern, detail that's going to be easy to draw onto your square. We are using oil pastels, so something to consider. Color, you can even have a little bit of the background. We're gonna to try to match that. I'm just gonna keep moving this around until I'm like, you know, I think I've decided that I'm going to make the nose one of my squares, because I'm gonna be doing four of these. So once I've decided that my nose is going to be my first composition, and I'll show you up here, I'm going to use just a piece of tape. I think we'll use the blue tape. But I'm gonna tape my viewfinder on. Fourth or fifth graders, you don't need to tape it like a million times. Just one will hold it steady here, so it's not gonna to move too much. So I've taped it once. Notice I didn't tape it over the top, because that way it's gonna be easy for me to peel off and remove, because I will be removing it and moving it around for my next one. So now I'm gonna do the same thing here. So this is two inches. So half of two is one. I'm gonna make it a little darker here so I can see where my line is. Maybe I'll even do it up above. That's a good idea, Mrs. Snyder. And now I'm going to be connecting these. This line can be a little bit darker because I really wanna be able to see where I'm dividing my image. Do the same on the other side. Now that I have my guidelines drawn, I'm ready to start translating each square into the appropriate square, which means I'm doubling the size. So this is where a lot of math comes in. This is math and art. We're doing some mart because I have to measure to be able to get things in the right place. So I'm looking for things like where colors change, where I see an actual shape that I'm going to be able to translate. So I'm going to look here and I'm going to say, okay, I see this pink thing and it comes in about you know, this far from the page. So I'm gonna look over on my page and say, okay, it comes in about that far, just making some guidelines to help me. And then it goes down this way, and then I need to see how tall, this doesn't go up very far either, so it's about that far, okay? And so then I'm just going to start placing the shape where I think it is. Now I've gotta look at, down at my screen so I can see here. So I'm trying to make this pink thing, and I'm trying to make it so that, I have it up too far here. It's going to go down in the same spot it does here. What I really want you guys to think about is whatever is happening in this square, the exact same thing has to be happening in this square. So I know that the shape then goes up this way Okay, and then it just, there's like a little black space, and then it continues into the next square. So I'm gonna try to go square by square because the goal will be that I am making it look exactly the same. Notice how much larger it is, but it still matches the proportions. It goes about to the end of the square and up here on this side. Last year, some kids found it helpful if they used pieces of paper to cover just the square they're working on so that it didn't um, distract them from what they were working on here. So another reference point looks about halfway in the square is where this is going to go down to. So I can measure about halfway here and then I can connect that line. You're also gonna to wanna to block out um, other colors. So I know that the black is gonna go here and it extends all the way to the corner. So I know that that section is going to be black Okay, so I can kind of block in some of my major shapes here. Um, another strategy is if you have a really complex square, you can further break down this square into smaller squares. If you do that, you might have an easier time translating your image. Now I know it looks weird, but I've translated most of the major shapes and color changes. I can see here that this represents where this color is. Notice it's about halfway up the square. Okay, so I just kind of blocked in. This represents all of the, the black section that will be added. 
Notice everything's really, really light because the next step will be to add color. And before I do that, I have to go and erase all of my guidelines so that then I'm ready to start adding color with the oil pastel or with the watercolor pencils.